So am I consciousness? That is the journey. Am I consciousness? So we need in the very first session of this series, we discussed that we need 360 degree understanding. So you have to contemplate and reflect that rather than focusing on just one lens, like my career identity, my gender, we need to strive to understand as a complex, multi-dimensional human being with many layers to unpack. So once we unpack many layers, in the end, we find that we are consciousness. That is why we need a 360-degree understanding. So we could reflect deeply on various aspects of our identity, our personal psychology, emotional landscape, goals and the fears, strengths and weaknesses, values and beliefs, life experiences, important relationship. It is not possible in the in the modern science that we should have uh, all the understanding at one place. So that is why the Eastern wisdom had its own way to create that 360 degree understanding. For example, we have Sattvic Guna, Rajasik Guna, Tamsik Guna. We have three bodies. We have five layers of the body. We have mind, memory, intellect, and the ego. We have the false eye and the real eye. We have an emotional dependence and the emotional freedom. So ultimately, we understand each and every aspect under one umbrella. And gradually, the time comes and we say, oh, I'm none of them. I'm consciousness. And the consciousness is of the nature of peace, happiness, love, truth, and wisdom. That is one way to understand the 360 degree understanding. So now reduce it to, yes, here is our, uh, Sam also joined it. Very good. <clears throat> so with that 360 degree understanding, so now we pick up step by step. So we picked up. Uh, do you still remember the desire versus self-fulfillment? Under desire, desire versus self-fulfillment, uh, we understood that, remember all the time, any time you have a problem in your life, anxiety in your life, duality and fear, first think of there are four goals in life, three goals are outside, one goal is the freedom. And the problem is related to the first three goals. So if you have a clear understanding, you can get out of it. And if you don't have the clear understanding, then you'll have a problem. Or it may be emotional dependence, it may be emotional intellectual paralysis, you are not able to think it rightly in the right direction. So we also understood that by understanding this, we create an ultimate harmony, uh, ultimate harmony of the external life so that the external life does not have any challenges. Now, how it is possible to have no challenges at all? From my side, it does not have any challenges. The world is constantly changing. Are you getting it? Word is constantly changing and the body is constantly changing. But deeper inside, I have a sense of harmony. So this is the journey we have to undertake. Remember this. Oh, your body will pass through the health and the sicknesses. It's normal. And the bank balance will change. But you are not impacted by it.
So if you are not impacted by it, you are ready to discover that real nature. Is there any other way? Yes, there is another way. You become a monk. Monk means you get initiated into the monkhood. Why? Why you got initiated into the monkhood? Because now you realize you are not at all interested in a hyper activities in the world outside. In your professional activities, your mind is totally absorbed deeper inside. So you, you go to the monastery and there you spend almost 18 to 20 hours of your study and the meditation under a teacher. You don't need to strike a harmony of the outer and the inner life. That is the journey of the monk. Not that, you know, I will go for a retreat for about a week. And even going for a retreat, eh, I check my phone more than I used to check at home. It will not work. It means my mind is still outside and I, I cannot, I, I'm not eligible for a retreat. One day is okay, a couple of hours you understand and then you start thinking about your life. So this is what I discussed before. So now every seeker faces four challenges. Do you still remember? All every seeker faces four big challenges in the journey of the self-discovery. I'm making it very simplified. First is the doubt regarding the validity of the teaching. Whatever you are learning from me, it is coming from the traditional wisdom. So my mind, still you agree to it, but still our mind have a doubt regarding the validity of the knowledge. So I don't have a complete faith even after understanding. So what is the remedy? You have to continue consistent listening and learning, plus contemplation and reflection is required on your part. If you do not do contemplation and reflection, the doubt will continue. And this doubt will prevent you realizing the real self. Second problem is the doubt regarding the object to be real. What is the object to be realized? It is the real self. So if your mind is mind is gross, no, we say in a gross in, in in Indian terminology, it means that it is it depends purely on the physical perception. And then a challenge is where is the real self? Where is the love? I don't see the love, physical. So doubt regarding the object. So I should know clearly what exactly is the nature of the real self when we say the real self. Ah, it is pure consciousness in one way. It is absolute existence, consciousness and bliss. And then it has six characteristics. We will understand that. So that is the second problem that we have. The third one. The distractions. Are you listening to me? Yes, I'm listening to you, and mind slowly distracts. Oh, phone buzz, and so let me pay attention more to the phone. I'm not able to pay total attention even for an hour long session. So that distraction, habit of distraction, the restless mind also. And the fourth one is the ignorance. Ignorance means the wailing part. Wailing means the dusting on the mirror. I have to remove dusting on the mirror is the mind. And dusting in terms of strong likes and dislikes. So until these four challenges are met. So now say, assume that you have met all the challenges. You have understood it and you are continuing the journey. Then what is required? Then we have 
nine or eight or nine steps. And just by understanding it, you can enter into the meditative state. The first step is known as the Mangala Charan, uh, auspiciousness or auspicious behavior. Or I just said you, you have to set the context. I made it very modern. I have to set the context of the journey. Second is the I we have to structure the inquiry. Uh, we are on a going for a self-inquiry. So I have to structure the self-inquiry. I have to frame the inquiry. The frame does not mean the charges I'm talking about. I have to I have to structure the inquiry that how, what are the elements, how to proceed. And then what happens when I structure the inquiry? So I have to check whether the mind is capable to structure the inquiry. So what are the qualities required in the mind, in the intellect? I should gain it. So now I have done it. So all these steps are internal. But my behavior does not change outside. So what should I do? I have to do the karma yoga. Whatever I have contemplated and reflected inside, my mind is clear. I have to express in my thought, in my speech, in my action, while living my personal, professional, social, family life. That is going to change my behavior and attitude. One guy told me, you know, my dad is crazy. Did I teach you to uh, to observe your dad or observe yourself? Eastern wisdom is totally focused on your self-discovery or you have started discovering your parents? What is this? We say this is a distraction. <laughs> you understand? We are not at all concerned about anyone. I'm only concerned about my behavior, my response, my thought, my understanding. So that is what the 360 degree understanding. 360 degree understanding is not, oh, who is it, Trump and who is Biden and then who is my parents? No. How I respond to each and every one in the world. By responding, do I live into that state of the calmness and peace? Do I live into that higher awareness? That is what the karma yoga is. I have to express. So what happens when you started doing this is the perhaps the fourth step. So when you started following this fourth step, the fifth step comes on its own. What is the fifth step? We say it is upasana, or we say it is an emotional freedom, or we say it is love for the existence. What does it mean? How come this happens? How this transformation takes place? You see, by following the first four steps that includes the karma yoga, your mind undergoes an inner transformation by which you see now you wake up in the morning you see your honey but you perceive you perceive the honey not at the individual level but at the cosmic level why your false assumption have dropped completely. Your limitedness, a limited perception has dropped. We'll talk about it in detail. So when your limited perception has dropped, the mind expands and you have a love for existence. What the Jesus says, love is God. We will, uh, that is the concept principle here. And once you have done all these five steps, now everything is very clear. You continue listening, 
learning, contemplating, and practicing in the sixth step, that is the path of the knowledge. So you undergo many stages of higher meditation. There are seven stages of meditation. And you pass through awakening, you pass through realization, you pass through transformation. What is the last step? I intentionally added, it's a joy of conscious living. So in every stage, in every moment in your life, you are into joy of conscious living. You are living in the world, but the world does not live in you. That is one more definition of awakening. So understand it clearly. First, you have to set the context. We will talk about it. What is the setting the context? You have to structure the inquiry in the second stage. That is what, what is all about the four connections. You have to prepare the mind. I have to prepare the mind how to go about the inquiry. You want to do research uh, on astronomy, you should set up a different protocol. You want to do the research in human uh, physiology, you have to set another protocol. Same way. It is setting the proper protocol. So it means I have to prepare the mind to move into that direction. A uh, discernment and dispassion and the six treasures. Uh, should I get upset? No, you get upset. It is emotional dependence. My dad is not listening to me is not a criteria here. Whether my mind is listening to me is a criteria here. That is what the 360 degree. And then we purification of the mind because we find a lot of challenges. We do it through the Karma Yoga, and then, then what we do in the next step, we withdraw the sense organs inside, along with the mind, to have a perception of a cosmic vision, a cosmic awareness. So limited perception to unlimited perception. And then we integrate the knowledge, of these principles, we enter into the stages of different samadhi. Mangala Charan is the first one. Now, see, if we don't follow these steps, what is going to happen? And if we follow these steps, what is going to happen? So you have to be very clear and logical. So the first step I said, you have to set the context of the inquiry, and that is what we say. It is Mangala Charan, invocation, invocation, or we say auspicious beginning by invoking higher awareness. That is another definition of the Mangala Charan. I wake up in the morning and I have a thought that the real self is of the nature of pure consciousness. I wake up in the morning. And I have a thought that uh, that guy cheated me and that guy is a crazy. So in one, in one part, the mind has set the context that I am the body and you are the body, so you cheated me. You see, they set the context. Be very clear about it. So if you are clear about it, you don't need to practice. You can reach to that state of consciousness easily. It takes time. And auspicious beginning. So we start with an auspicious beginning by invoking the higher awareness. So we will also understand what are the ways to invoke the higher awareness all the time. So it fosters the receptivity. It brings you back the focus and the concentration on the journey of the self-discovery. 
So now I will only talk about these nine steps in detail. So that is the first step in brief. The second step is uh, normally I say either you structure the inquiry or I say the four, four connections. Where is the fourfold connection? We frame the main spiritual question and method. Why? It gives the inquiry a direction and clarity. Otherwise, people normally say, oh, sit in meditation, focus on the breath, and look into the sea, and look into the sea in the, or the space. Uh, do you have a sky inside your head? No. So why we say that we see the space? So we have to be very clear about it. This Saturday's journey is for a higher level of a secret. So you all are higher level of a secret. That's why we are talking about. It. So the fourfold connection, or we we set, we structure the inquiry. Means I have a right spiritual question. And a method. I start saying myself that I am a seeker. And then I check myself whether I have that capacity. I can say I am a swimmer, but I have never seen the water. You see, we said the spiritual question. And a method. And what is the subject matter? Our subject matter is the real self. And then what is the res result? Result is the realization of the real self. So our focus is there. Focus is not there on you, me, he, she, it, likes, dislikes, etc. But they come into our mind. So we have to follow the third step. We have to prepare the mind. You see how, how systematic is the journey? But do you find these systematic approach in any? Can you suggest me any book? No, it is not possible. Why it is not possible? You come to me and I see your temperament. And then I see that you don't require the first two steps. I can directly take you to the third step. And so based on that, the teacher has written the book. Now you study the book. You require the first two steps, so you are confused. That is why the teacher is required. But teachers have written the book to confuse us, no. You have to you have to be very clear about these things. So that is why we bring all the texts together, and the teacher should be well versed with the different texts so that they can refer teachings of those masters. A teaching has to be life. Teaching has to be personal. Teaching has to be personalized. So once the mind has to be prepared, and how the mind has to be prepared. So I have to understand what is judgmental inquiry and what is inquiry done by the discernment and dispassion. Two modes of inquiry. So more and more we follow the path of discernment it is going to change your life, your attitude and behavior. It makes you calm, relaxed, easygoing. No, you may have a lot of challenges, but it makes you easygoing. Result, mental maturity, intellectual maturity in your life. And that maturity works in your personal, professional, and social life. 
So once you have that mental maturity, then only you can enter into the path of karma yoga. Normally we say karma yoga, oh, just do some service, give a glass of water to the older people. And when you are old, nobody offers you a glass of water. Oh, they don't know karma yoga. No, that is not karma yoga. It is a total shift in your mental attitude inside and being expressed outside in thought, speech, and action. So that we are going to take up after karma yoga. I gave you that we have we have a different perception of the world outside. You look at your house, you say it is. Ah, it is okay. It is not me and mine. Me and mine is used for the sake of convenience. It is a part of the whole cosmos. What is happening? You start dropping that that limited ego sense. Ownership is gone. Oh, he is my husband or she is my. You mind leaves that ownership. For the sake of convenience, you say it. But internally, you have that sense of wisdom. So there, there awakens in us. What that awakens in us? What I told you, know, I will talk about in detail. Love is God. So once our mind and the intellect has reached to that state of awareness, then we then we focus only on the fundamental principles of listening and learning, contemplation and reflection, and followed by the practice. So what happens? Now you have you continue doing the practice. Now what happens? One day you don't do the practice and you are still living into that state of consciousness. So that is your first stage of meditation. Then we follow another principle. We start doing the second stage of meditation. The time comes, same thing. You need not to do it. You live into that state of awareness. So now you can fairly uh, understand, oh, this is the first stage of meditation. This is the second stage. That is how the Patanjali has, Master has given seven or nine stages of meditation. So every stage of meditation has its own revelation, has its own understanding, has its own realization. So should you need to understand that it gives you a sense of freedom? No, because when you pass through those stages of meditation, you understand, you experience that sense of freedom. You need not to be told. You need not to be taught. You understand, oh, now I have that sense of freedom. That revelation is there. And when you pass through all the nine stages, I said in the last stage, it is the joy of conscious living. There is another word for joy of conscious living. <clears throat> Uh, it is known as Sahaj Samadhi. Sahaj means spontaneous, natural. Samadhi means the highest state of meditation. Natural, effortless state. And there is a sense of spontaneous joy. So that is uh, in nine steps you have this. Step.
going back to the very first step. Now I will not talk about 360 degree understanding for desires, desire versus self-fulfillment, 360 degree harmony. I will not discuss, I have already discussed in detail and you should keep in your mind that, uh, that oh, can I do without these four desires? Yes, we can do. I have already explained to you. So we will talk only of these nine steps. From today onward in our sessions. Mangala Charan is the first step. You open up any text of by master over a period of 10,000 years, any text by these great masters, not the, what we have written and I passed on to you those texts. Those great masters, they begin their text in the writing with the Mangalachar with auspicious way, directly, indirectly, hidden. And it is the teacher, when you learn under a teacher, he opens up and he explains you, here is Mangalachara. It reminds you. So it means every teacher, directly or indirectly, teaches you the first step auspicious beginning. It may be mantra. Normally, I, I have broken that rule, so now I will start with that. So normally what happens that every session begins with some sort of a mantra. A mantra recitation at the start of a meditation. You know, you already seen in the you. Yoga studios, Vasatoma, Satagamaya, that is also a way of doing the Mangalacharan. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, or a couple of times Om. So, but they have not related to the first principle of setting the context of the inquiry. And that is why people have a lot of confusion. Oh, it has a religious connotation. No, it has nothing to do with it. We want to set the context of the inquiry. When you are saying Om a couple of times, we say Om represents, there are five different explanations. So one explanation is that Om represents, Om has three syllables. The first syllable, O, represents the waking state, who represents the dream state, and uh, Ma represents the sleep state, and all the three together represents the fourth state of the consciousness, and that is the real self. That is the meaning of all. Simply by saying no. That, that also becomes Mangala Sharma. Or you simply say Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So let there be peace at the physical level. Let there be peace at the subtler mental and intellectual level. And let the peace manifest at the spiritual level. So we are setting the context that our goal is to go deeper, to find the essence. So every way, every must the ones who have undergone a traditional learning under a teacher, he will definitely extract that Mangala Charan and auspiciousness while teaching from a particular text. <laughs> We, we have to set the context <clears throat> because it reminds you 
it reminds you that this is the goal. This is the journey. But now, if a person has a lot of stress, we will say, yes, let us chant Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, let everyone be happy. So we change that, but context is the same. You can also say Mangala Charan is like an opening prayer. But remember, prayer is not here, means anything to do with the religion. Prayer means a recognition of the essence of our being, which is one in the same in every human being. <clears throat> here, the prayer does not mean any religious prayer. That, in essence, we all are one. My body, your body may be different. We set that context. So every day you are listening and learning, but at the same time, in the background, that you know that, oh, in a sense, we are essentially one. That is the context of inquiry. So you are listening and learning, and over a period of time, the mind starts focusing its attention on the essence. I'm just giving a brief introduction of Mangala Charan, and then we will also practice some of these Mangala Charan. So there is a praise in the praise in different verses for a master. So that master means here the guru. Guru here means that I should recognize I have to move from ignorance to wisdom. That is Guru. It has nothing to do with this. Guru means Guru means ignorance to wisdom. So that is why we have many mantras pertaining to the Guru also. But it doesn't, it means what? It means that I should have a humility and receptivity to learn. If I don't have the humility and receptivity to learn, I don't learn it. So what happens with the Mangala Charan? It helps you focus your mind inward, not outside. It creates a receptivity to absorb the teaching. It removes your mental distraction so that higher awareness can arise. It invokes your elevated energies to aid your practice. These are the benefits of the first step. I will go in detail about the first step of Mangala Charan. If not done, now you don't do it. Ah, oh, this is a kind of a ritual. Teach me. Oh, mindfulness is just in a state of awareness. It is an effortless practice. Why you are making effort by speaking to me then? We don't understand that. Oh, we make a statement, loud statement. I believe when you say you are making a loud statement, it means you are making a false statement. So when we don't do it, what happens? Mental distraction is there. Four problems. Inability to internalize subtle truths. I fail to internalize the subtle truth. Oh, who cares? You know, this is just a ritual. Teach me the essence. Teacher says, then you are crazy enough. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so the mind remains distracted, progress is obstructed, blessings, no, that is how we say the blessings is not received. Because your mind has already created a barrier. Make it very clear. No one is important. Knowledge is important. So when we say blessings is not received, means you have obstructed it.
you have obstructed for the knowledge to enter into you. Saturday session, we are just learning the highest teachings of, I'm just merging all the, you know, the topmost text, second group, third group, and then I'm summarizing it. So that is why we say, the grace and the blessings are not received by those people, those students who do not set the context of an inquiry because their mind remains uh, distracted. And when the mind remains distracted, you cannot reach to that state of then the beginning is not made. So if you go to any other teacher, or you have been to any other traditional teacher, and if they, they start the journey with certain mantras, and you are waiting what he is going to speak after the mantra, your mind is not paying attention to them, then you are not learning anything. Normally you leave that teacher. So setting that context is available in all the different traditions originated in India. Whether you say it is a Buddhism, they have also to set the context in a different way. Close your eyes. Close your eyes and let us set the context of which you are already, already familiar. Close your eyes and set the context. What we set the context? Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina. Sarve bhavantu sukhinah. Let everyone be happy. Now I'm purely explaining in terms of setting the context. Perhaps I have not explained that part before. Let everyone, it is outside, be happy. Happiness is only one state, one state of the consciousness. So we are moving from everyone to oneness. And that oneness, that oneness is happiness pervading everywhere. Now what is the, what is, what you, how you set the context? Oh, you set the context that it is all happiness. It is only one. I'm not different from you. I'm not separate and different from you. Do you see that? So in order to realize that, our master says it's a physical level, it's a subtler level, it's a causal level. Beyond all the three levels, there is only one thing, one essence. And what is that one essence? Is the consciousness. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, we have done Sarve Santu Niramaya. Sarve Santu Niramaya. 
Sarve Santu Niramaya. Now you see, everyone should be healthy. Everyone, everyone should, everyone or should be healthy. You can say should be healthy. So health here means the holiness, oneness again. Wholeness. It has to do with the wholeness or completeness. You cannot say, I am complete in myself, you are complete in yourself, because there is only one completeness, there is one whole. It has to be one unit. It cannot be two units of whole. That is found in science, but in, in Eastern wisdom, there is only one whole. Holiness. And that is why we need to study uh, the, not only the physical level, not only the cause, subtle level, not only at the causal level, and behind that we find there is oneness. Can I perceive behind the skin appearance of you and me, behind the different colors of and the different shapes of the eyes and the nose and the cheeks, behind the skin it is the same matter in different proportion. Matter is in different proportion, but the matter is the same. Oh, yes, matter is the same. Mind is as such is the same. The contents of the mind is different based on my knowledge and misunderstanding and ignorance. You see, I'm removing your doubt. Those four challenges, you remember. Now you will know every secret of my teaching to you. And we, we teachers are always open to that. <clears throat> you should know everything. Then what is left? Ah, oh, it's uh, removing the doubt, the holiness. And then what is that wholeness? Who prompts the mind to work and act? It is the presence of the consciousness. So your mind first time inspires you to ask a question, am I consciousness? Why? Because you have already understood, it has nothing to do with the physical level or the causal level or the subtler level. So there we extract the knowledge, we change our perception, our perception changes completely and we see that we are one consciousness. Service. Bhadrani Pashyantu Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu What it says, it means let everyone be blessed. I have already explained, you know, I the topic of blessings has come. So we don't receive the blessing because we live into that ignorance. I have to set the context. Context of what? That we are consciousness. So when you set that context, your mind becomes receptive and then Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, that means let everyone be blessed. The grace and the blessing should fall upon each and every one. So I don't have any strong likes 
or dislikes in favor or against you or anyone. I say, let the blessing and the grace should fall upon each and every one. Sometimes our mind excludes even our near and the dear ones with whom we have some set score to settle. So you see that that is dissolved, that objection, that duality, that conflict in the mind is dissolved by setting the context of the inquiry. Are you getting it? I believe so. That is why we have to follow this. Ma kashche dukha bhag bhavi Ma kashche dukha bhag bhavi Ma kashche dukha bhag bhavi We are using this mantra as if we are setting the context of the inquiry. Now you see that what is the meaning of this? By understanding you move into that state. That is the beauty. So what it means, let none suffer from misery in this world. There should not be any misery. There should not be any suffering. But uh, what state of the mind you can say that let no one suffer from any misery in this world. The mind is filled with a compassion. And the compassion expressed is love living inside. And that it is not the love of the mind because that would be an attachment. It is beyond the mind. That love outflows into, outpours into the mind. And then we, our mind says, let none suffer from misery in this world. So the compassion is there. In another way, this is what we talk of compassion in Buddhism. So we set the context now. You see that? What happens to the mind? I need not to say it. You know it. What happens to the mind? Sarve bhadrani pashyantu Ma kashche dukha bhag bhavi. So with that understanding, my friend, if you set the context of the inquiry every time, we will also be changing, we will also be changing, we will also be changing, our method of practicing on Mondays and Thursdays. We will take this understanding and on Mondays and Thursdays sessions. You can set the context again by mentally singing Oh. But when you are setting the context, as you start singing Oh, you remember in your mind, and with, or maybe I can say you. Imagine you move, you are transitioning from the waking state to dream state to sleep state and to the fourth state. Have a vision. Now, what should be the fourth state, which is different from waking, dream, and sleep? And mentally, you are saying, oh.
You're simply saying, oh, this is one way to set the context. And then what? As we have been doing it, or for the sake of not doing it, you are just comfortable. I believe you still remember being comfortable. You look at the entire body, physical level. You feel the sensation. You are not doing anything because the moment you are aware of the physical body, there is bound to be some sensation. Is bound to be some comfort, and there is a sense of steadiness. So you look at the body again. That is another simple way, provided your mind is not distracted again and again. Do you still remember distraction is one of the four major problems in the journey of the self-discovery? So now let us check it, examine it. You are aware of the body again. No distraction. There is a sensation, comfort and steadiness. You look at the body again. This time, your experience of sensation, comfort and steadiness is deeper. You look at it again. Third time, your experience is deeper. Then only you can say that my I have no distraction. If the experience is not deeper, it is purely an intellectual, then you won't have such a deeper experience at all. Oh, this is, you did not tell us before. Yes, I will tell when the opportunity comes. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand, lift your both your palms, place it on your eyes, open your eyes inside the palms, know your experiences, and bring the hands down. Now is the time to share your experiences. How are you, Stephen? Stephen is gone. Gone. How are you, Dennis? Thank you. Um, uh, what I find 
uh, beautiful about Saturday's session is that you explain the technology, the techniques, the inner workings of the things that uh, otherwise we are doing uh, mostly out of faith because the, the teacher said so. The teacher said that we have to do the mantra and we do it. But it is so much better to understand why this mantra is important and, and how exactly it will help me to uh, to manage, to work on my mind, to walk on the path and to reach the destination. And, and that is what uh, really amazes me about the Saturday session. Thank you. Beautiful. Yes, that's a beautiful way to explain it. But Danny, how many people are ready to listen to this explanation is another matter. <laughs> that is also another matter. So there is no doubt. So it means the, all the four problems are constantly present in the mind. So even if the teacher knows it and wants to explain, and they say, no, continue doing it, Om Namah Shiva. Continue doing this mantra. And they wait. So that is the, 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 both ways it is possible. How are you, David and Jerry? <laughs> uh, thank you. The, uh, yeah, to sort of add on to Dennis's point, I 100% agree. It's, it's the understanding the why of the technology. Um, for me, the the lesson and the practice today was um, I had a, a words just popped into my mind. It was uh, perspective, humbleness, and gratitude. And when you talk about thousands of, I think you said ten thousand years. I mean, it's just humbling to realize that we're just like this tiny, tiny, tiny little dot in the universe. Um, and the gratitude comes from getting getting to get all that ten thousand years of knowledge. Uh, and all those people and all that wisdom. So, and I guess the fourth word is excitement. I'm excited for what appears to be sort of another chapter that we're going into right now. So thank you. Beautiful, that's another beautiful way to uh, understand it. Yes, you both said, Dennis and you, that understanding is definitely required, but how many people wants to really understand? That is also another uh, challenge. How are you, Jerry? Sir, I'm good, thank you. Oh my. Um, just the groundwork that the intention and the invocation and the inquiry sets allows us to see that we are this blessing. And if we don't see that, if we don't understand what we're doing and why we're doing and we are we are insignificant maybe the dot but really we're so expansive we're so yeah. we're so um rich with that love and the truth and the wisdom and so unless we if it's obstructed then we're limited yes beautifully put it you know if because we feel limited because of the ignorance but then my mind moves in another direction. It stucks with the ignorance. So only when we are ready to understand, we see that limitedness is not there. We are so much expensive. We are so much full of that love and the wisdom. And that is what the entire journey of the Eastern wisdom is. Beautiful. Beautiful way to put it. How are you, Brandy? Good morning. I'm fine. Um, same as Dre, you know, the, the lesson today helped me consider how I block my own blessings. And and even when I went into the meditation, right, there was like one time where like if you're not, you know, going deeper, um, then you're not here, you're not here, you're not getting it essentially. And it so you know, that's something for me to think about. Not only to think about, but apply the moment I have a sense of anxiety, duality, and a conflict.
I have to see, I have to see, instantly remind myself to enter into that state of auspiciousness. Anytime I have a sense of anxiety, it means I have, I'm unblocking it. Unblock. That is the way you rightly pointed out. That is another way to put it. So, how are. How are you, Terry? Good. I, it's hard to say. Uh, I most. I was listening and paying close attention, and I reached to a state a state of awareness, but there are no words. Yeah, no words. You live into that state yeah. of consciousness and no words. So what happens when you live into that state of the consciousness? Just think, Terry, that when we live into that state of the consciousness, that bypasses the limitations of the physical body. Uh -huh. That bypasses, that transcends the limitations of the physical body. So whether it is your body or my body, we recognize that we are the same consciousness. How are you, Vaibha? Thank you, sir. Sir, I'm calm. Uh, it's like that uh, this knowledge helps me opening up the mind and realizing that I create my own limitations and being captivated to my own habits. If I if I see this with the knowledge, then it's open up the mind and be calm and see beyond my limitations. Yes, another beautiful way to narrate it. That is why the entire Eastern wisdom we say Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, moving from ignorance to wisdom. We are simply saying, we listen it, we grasp it intellectually, but as a seeker, we don't question. No, no, you only say that it is movement from ignorance to wisdom. Why you are giving me a practice? No, 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 we have to do the practice. We don't question the teacher. So the teacher is also happy, it's better not to question, you know. So you see, you understand this, you know. Asatoma satagamaya, tamasoma jyotirigamaya, that is moving from ignorance to wisdom. We don't question. We don't say practice, 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 practice. How are you, Sam, sir? Uh, good. I uh, appreciated the lesson very much today. And it's been going along with my theme of pr trying to apply the knowledge in each moment every day. Good. Apply that. We will discuss next week how much you have applied it. How are you, Ashok? Sir, thank you very much. And uh, I am in peace and uh, calm and uh, uh, nothing to say, nothing to ask. Thank you. <laughs> Understand this week you remember, contemplate and reflect on the first. Now I have left the eight, nine steps, but now I have come to the, all the nine steps now. First step is the Mangala Charan in Moka. Mm -hmm intention and you can use the word inspiration let me inspire myself and live into that state and see what happens this week that is all for today thank you very much we will meet again.
थैंक यू सर नमस्ते एवरीवन थैंक यू नमस्ते